Hey guys, in today's lesson, we are going to be talking about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And so to do this, really a rational expression is a fraction. So um, to do this, let's kind of jog our memories about multiplying fractions. So when you multiply a fraction, it's the easiest thing ever. You're just going to multiply across the top and multiply across on the bottom. You can also simplify if you want to. So let's do it this way first. So I have um, four sixths, and then you can simplify to two thirds. Another way to do this is to take this as long as one is on the bottom and one is on the top. So I can cancel this way, or I can cancel this way, I can cancel this way. Um, so as long as one's on the bottom, one's on the top. So notice that um, I can simplify two and four, that becomes one and two as a two goes into both of them. Then I can go ahead and multiply across on the top, which is two, multiply across on the bottom, which is three. Notice both ways give me the same answer. So it's totally your choice, however you wanna do it. So try the second one here. Okay, so either way, um, you should have simplified to nine tenths. Okay, when we divide, um, it is actually a sneaky snake multiplying problem. So we're gonna take this and we're going to um, find the reciprocal of it and multiply that to the five sevenths. So um, I'm just gonna rewrite this as five sevenths times three tenths and then do the same thing. Um, this one, so the reciprocal of four is one fourth. So I'm gonna say eight thirteenths times one fourth. So go ahead and multiply those together and see what you get. Okay, so you should end up with four or three over 14 and two over 13. Okay, something else that's gonna come up is our ability to factor. So we're just gonna practice these again. Um, so go ahead and factor this and factor this one. Okay, so I showed my steps um, and your final answers should end up like these. Okay, guys, so now let's go ahead and jump into really what we're talking about. So we've done some background information that we're going to need, um, but when we are simplifying rational expressions, um, so when we think about simplifying, you know, like this makes sense. We're simplifying that. Um, same thing with rational expressions. We're going to simplify them when we're, um, before we multiply or divide. So when we are simplifying, the key word is factor. We are going to factor as much as we possibly can. It's going to make it so much easier. So we're going to factor um, the numerator and the denominator if we can, if that's possible. And then we're going to cancel anything that we can. So I'm going to look at this as like two different problems. So I'm going to factor this and factor that. So go ahead and do that first. If you'll notice on top, it was x minus 1 and x minus 1, and on bottom, it was x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so the next step is we are going to cancel where we can. So I have an x minus 1 on top and an x minus 1 on bottom. So my final answer is these two. So I'm going to have x minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some different rules that we're going to have to follow. So um, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is if we were to have a problem like this, um, students see the two x's, like the x on top and the x on bottom, and say, oh, okay, those cancel out and my answer is one. You cannot do that. So the thing is, is that these are a married couple. So um, the plus and minus, their wedding rings, they keep them together. They are not getting divorced. So we can't just divorce the X's and leave that one by itself. That does not work. Um, what we could do is let's pretend like this is X squared plus X over X. What we could do is factor out an X. So this has a GCF of X. And so now these are single people, so we can cancel them, and that's okay. But we've got to leave that married couple together. Now, notice up here, we can cancel out two married couples. So that's okay um, if the whole married couple is the same and they cancel out. Um, but we just can't do pieces of them um, unless we factor out, like, a single person. 
Okay, so when we are multiplying and dividing, um, the three rules are factor everything you can. That makes it so much easier. And then we're going to multiply straight across, or if we're dividing, we have to multiply by the re reciprocal. Okay, so those are our three rules that we're following. So notice that this one is multiplication, so I don't have to worry about flipping anything. Um, so it looks like it is as simple as it can get. So my first step is I'm just gonna cancel where I can. So um, again, the rule is as long as it's on top and as long as it's on bottom. So um, this one and this one can cancel out because one was on top, one was on bottom. Um, let's see, what about this one and this one? Those cancel out. Okay, so we only have one married couple left and we can't do anything with them. So look, look at the single people. Um, so I have an X here and an X squared here. So I'm gonna cancel those out and um, I'm gonna get, this is X to the first and this is X squared. So I'm just left with one X there. So now I'm gonna multiply across on the top. <clears throat> on the top, so I had two times x minus one, and then three x. So some people ask me if I prefer it like that, or like go ahead and distribute the two. Either way is totally fine with me. Okay, so on this one, just be careful, this is a division. So the first thing I'm gonna um, think about is like, I'm gonna eventually have to flip those. Um, but notice that this one, I can factor out a GCF so that it's five times X plus three. So let's go ahead and I don't think I can do, oh, oh, oh look at this one. I can factor out a three so I have two X minus one, and then I'm gonna multiply those together, 15. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up. I've done a lot of yucky stuff. It looks not pretty right now. Okay, so that side stay, stayed the same. So I'm gonna multiply, so don't forget to flip it. So I have five times X plus three, and then we had 15 times two X minus one. Okay. So now um, see if you can cancel and um, finish out the problem. Okay, so when I canceled out, I ended up with nothing on top, but you need a filler, so we have to put a one there. Um, on the bottom, I was left with X minus one and three, and so I multiplied across on the top and multiplied across on the bottom, and that was my answer. Um, okay, so for these next two, what I want you to do is just factor them. Factor them first and let's get them broken down. Okay, so these are what the factors should look like. So this one is nice because I can just um, cancel and then multiply across. Don't forget on this one to um, multiply by its reciprocal. So go ahead and see what you can do on those two. Okay, um, so notice that this, when I multiplied it across, there was nothing left over. So unlike this one, if you have a, if you have nothing left over on top, you have to have a filler. But if it's on the bottom, anything over one is just itself. So I can just write it like this. Um, this one, when I multiplied across, I did two on bottom, so that was my final answer. Okay, now this is a crazy one. So see if you can do this one. Um, I would maybe go ahead and flip this first and then simplify and multiply across, see what you get. Okay, so let's talk about the canceling. So this is where you should have gotten so far as far as like the um, breaking it down, factoring it out. Um, okay, so let's see, we have an X plus two and a two plus X. Do those mean the same things? Can I flip them around? And I sure can, so I can cancel those out. Um, same thing with this one. I have an X plus four and a four plus X. So that's okay. We can totally cancel those out. Um, we've got two single people right here, two over two. Those cancel out. And I don't see anything else. So let's go ahead and multiply across. So I have three X plus one and X plus six. Let's multiply across on the bottom. So I have two minus X, four minus X, and I have a four. And so that is my final answer.